welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. Today I am making my black raspberry vanilla star soap. That's right, and I'm rocking black raspberry hair. <laughs> I love this soap. It is such a popular soap. It is such a delicious fragrance. So come with me and I'll show you how I make it. Squee! So I'm going to go ahead and add my cooled lye water to my cooled oils. And I'm sort of making a double batch here. And why I say sort of is because one will have the full sized bars and one will probably have slightly smaller bars. So this particular soap recipe is my tried and true soap recipe. The only difference between the oils and things that you're seeing here and, you know, my other soaps that I make sometimes is that I've got goat's milk in this one. And you can probably tell because the oils weren't clear, they were opaque. So one thing I find really nice about goat's milk is that I can add it straight into my base oils and I do that, what I do is my base oils get heated up so that they'll be the same temperature as my lye and then I plop in an ice cube of goat's milk and I mix that all into the hot oils so it dissolves into the oils, it brings everything down so the temperatures are all coming down at a nice time together and it means I have lovely nourishing goat's milk soap which is just so yum. So I'm going to go ahead now and mix my colours for this soap and I'm using a lovely soft baby rose pink mica and my trusty mocha mica. I'm also using white titanium dioxide for the base to lighten it up, although that is kind of a little bit of a silly move in some ways because what does black raspberry vanilla soap do? Do we know guys? Any um, guesses? Leave them in the comment section below. That's right, vanilla. Anything with vanilla in it, that is the key word. It can discolour. So maybe putting titanium dioxide in the base wasn't the smartest move. Maybe leaving it plain might be a better idea for next time. But what I've sort of tried to do with this fragrance is I've mucked around with the recommended usage rates. So for the first time I ever made it, I used a full amount and it completely discoloured. And I used some beautiful micas that ended up just ended up not looking good. I'll leave a link below to that video. I was really happy with the top and the design and everything but the discoloration was a bummer and since then I've done half of the recommended weight which smelled nice but it was light and it didn't discolor so that was good and then this batch I've done like not the full amount and not half so like three quarters of the amount that they recommend I know that's a little bit confusing but it's because I'm trying to get a soap that smells really nice and strong of black raspberry vanilla but doesn't discolor and that is a mission so now I'm just going ahead and pouring my soap in the mold yay
So now that all the soap's in the mold, I'm going to give it a nice swirly mantra swirl top. And as you saw, I went through and gave it a, a hanger swirl on the inside as well. I love these soft colours. I mean, I do love bold colours as well, I will admit. But these soft colours are so nice. And they really do represent almost like Neapolitan dessert or something. Like a real lovely mix. And that's what black raspberry vanilla is. To me, it's a beautiful blend. So now that I've given them a swirly decorative top, I'm going to go along with some toppers that I made from a previous batch of black raspberry vanilla. And what these toppers are was an agate wear log that I've then sliced into discs. So they have little peaking bits of colour. You can't see them so well on the camera, which is a shame. But little bits of colour of black raspberry and vanilla from a previous batch that are all swirled together and then sliced up. And I didn't quite have enough, so I've taken that knife you can see there and cut some of them in half so that I actually have one for every single bar. I'm not that happy with how they look but oh well and now I'm just putting some little tiny little soap um, balls yeah little tiny soap balls they're real teeny tiny ones that I make and it takes a lot of time a lot of fluffing around so I know a lot of soapers wouldn't be into doing this because it is a bit of a fluff around but I just sit there at night in front of the TV with my husband and fluff around and roll the little balls so <laughs> So here they are, the final soaps, and don't they look gorgeous? I really do like how it's come out with all these funny little toppers, and the swirl is just pretty. I mean, the swirl on its own would have been fine. I could have just left it like a metro swirl, and that would have looked gorgeous. But this is what I decided to do. I decided to pop these funny little toppers on. So this beautiful soap sits overnight, and we're back again the next day to cut it into bars. And I'm pretty excited to see how the swirl came out, I must admit. So we'll bring the multi-bar cutter down now and slice the soap. It's just hard enough. It's still a little bit soft and sticky, as you can see there. But it's a good way for me when I'm using the multi-bar cutter. So I'll just flip the view here so you can actually see the swirl. I'm really excited to see how the swirl came out. Ooh, the suspense is killing me. Oh, I like it. It's soft and delicate. That brown colour has faded so much that it's almost like a purple, like the kind of purple that you might get from Alkanet Root. Not a really bright, vibrant purple, but it doesn't look brown anymore. Um, I really, really like it, but as you can see, these soaps are a little bit sticky, and so therefore they're a little bit tricky for me to take apart. You can actually see the smudge mark on the bar where I've had to slide it off because it's still a bit soft. If you get soap like this and you're not in a major hurry, you can always just go away at this stage and leave it to harden up a little bit. You can always run it through the multi-bar cutter a second time or something like that once it's harder. But for me, I was in a hurry. I was cutting a bunch of soaps and I needed to free up the multi-bar cutter. So you can see better in this shot what I mean about those little toppers. They also had very faded sort of colour, like not really, really bright, but it definitely had a little bit of the brown and a little bit of the pink and a little bit of the white. So it all matches, you know what I mean? Matchy, matchy. And I'm pretty chuffed with these swirls, actually. Wow, I can see faces in them. Can you see those little girls' faces? <gasps> Whoa, freaky!
So these soaps came out really, really good. I got two loaves of really beautiful soap. Um, and I'm going to show you some photos just in a minute of what it looks like after it's been up on the curing rack so you can see the discoloration. So here it is wet, and if you pay close attention to that white, you'll see in the next photo how yellow it goes. Look at that. That's after it's discoloured. It's quite amazing, really. So there they are, all in this um, curing rack. And as you can see, I ended up making them all the same size. They're all small bars. So that's cool. I'm all stocked up for my wholesale order. And this week, I'd like to highlight Carolyn Newton and her amazing soap that she swirled and shared in our group. This is the Taiwan Swirl, by the way. And our group is called Star Soaps Family. It's over on Facebook. We'd love to have you as a member and we'd love to see your creations so that we can take the photos and put them in our videos and highlight you and give a shout out to you. Because I just love seeing what you make. So I hope you did enjoy watching this video and if you did feel free to hit that subscribe button, become a member of our Star Soaps family and feel the soapy love. Bye!